Hey everyone, welcome to the Sanctum. This is Elle. And so today we're going to do a pick a card. I wanted to do this, I'd seen a few videos on it and I thought it was quite interesting, but I'm going to do mine a little bit differently. Um, as you probably know, um, I like to mix things up. I've done a, a silent video where you get to choose your what the reading is based on the information provided on the card. So today we're going to do a pick reading based on what it is in store for me for the winter months. So we're in the middle of November, heading to December, January, February being the deepest winter months. Basically this is an overall look, whether it be monetary, romance, love, um, finances, work, that kind of a thing. We're kind of taking a look at it, at all this. So you see four piles, but I'm not going to tell you which pile is which. What you need to do is look at the stones and choose a stone. And then of course I'll do the links below so you can go straight to the one that you chose. So this one, as you can see here, I'm going to bring it close, is a Super 7. It's actually one of my favorite stones. Um, I have three of them now. I just recently bought a third one and I'm like, ha ha ha. I will probably end up with God knows how many more before this is all said and done. I actually love the coloring in this and I love the way it makes me feel. It's called Caxiconite. Um, this is Smookalite. This is beautiful actually. This is actually a lovely piece. Um, I actually left out into this piece. This is Iolite. It's an awesome tumble piece. And let me tell you, it's cool to the touch. And when you see it, you can just see the little metallic shine in it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, yeah. It is gorgeous. And my always favorite, Labradorite. So, as you can see here, with all that shine and shimmer and sheen. So, what I want you to do is take a look at all of them and see one that you like the best and then I want you to pick one of those stones so whichever one you pick that's going to be the card batch we're going to go through and see what's in store for you for the winter months okay perfect okay so those of you who picked super seven we're going to do you first so we're going to put these in the back and take this pile first. So Super 7, let's see what you have in store for you. Ah, we have Moon and Cancer, Tanzanite for Clarity, oh, Queen of Pentacles in Reverse, we have Clear Quartz. Let go of control issues. Two of swords. Regeneration. Destiny. Nice. In the world. Okay. So, as you probably can tell, there's quite a few cards in here. And there's a reason why I wanted to do this. Is Winter months are the time of Carrot when, um, when it comes to Celtic issues. So what I wanted to do was to actually go through and um, do an in-depth study of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some um, going into the winter month stuff. So November, December, um, so we get to the heart of the deep, dark winter, and then into January, February, as we start easing into spring. So first we're going to talk about is our moon in Cancer. We're going to talk about the two swords. And the clear quartz. So, for Moon and the Cancer, it says, and I quote, a sensitive, introspective phase. Now, one of the, the interesting things about Moon and Cancer is the fact that this is a time where of belonging, finding out where you belong, how you belong, where you belong, and. I think this is the time of year where most people have a very tough time. Um, I'm not going to be 
I'm going to be honest with you, this is the time when we see the highest amount of suicides, um, both in the United States and overseas. Uh, if, if by chance you have those kinds of feelings, please talk to somebody, a, a friend, get help. There's the national um, phone lines for um, suicide and depression. I will link them below. Going into the season, it is really, really tough. Some people don't feel they belong, and it is something we need to work on. Because sometimes belonging isn't necessarily to a bunch of people, or it's, sometimes it's to a place. Sometimes it's to very few people, and we just need to learn to accept that our level of belonging isn't what, what society says. So we need to learn to be happy with belonging, and that's what this is about. It's about a sensitive, introspective phase of learning to belong. The other thing is, is destiny. This is from the Chakra Wisdom Deck by uh, Tori Hart, uh, Hartman. And one of the things I love about this deck is the fact that this particular card is specifically made for the spirit. So we're looking at the spirit of destiny. What am I destined to do? You are in a midst of revolving. You're looking at new things. You're looking at yourself thinking, what am I going to get rid of? What am I really meant to do with my life? And this is what we're going to look at. So you're getting ready to get rid of stuff that you're not wanting to do, you're not wanting to deal with. Two of Swords. So one of the interesting things about the Two of Swords, especially for anybody who's ever had to deal with any of the Swords um, at all, at least um, in my book, is the fact that when dealing with the Two of Swords, I have discovered for myself personally, and I don't know about any of you, I have always found it to be a very difficult time in my life. Um, it's about indecision, and truce, and blocked emotions. So what emotions are you dealing with that you feel blocked about? What kind of feelings do you feel that you really need to deal with? So going into the winter months dealing with the holidays, this is going to be your big thing. And it's okay. It happens to all of us. Now we're going to deal with clear quartz. Now, this is part of a new deck that I'm going to be showcasing shortly. In clear quartz, it says, I am a clear channel of love, light, and well-being. All of my heart's desires are realized now. Now, the other part of this says, multiply goodness and well-being. Ampli amplify loving kindness. Increase clarity, peace, and understanding. Improve clarity of mind and emotions. So, basically it's the time to really become what your heart desire. Do what you really want to do with your life. What are you wanting to become? So, as we get deeper in, we're going to talk a little bit more about what's happening. We're going to need some clarity. Chance and I, one of my favorite stones of all time. Love it, love it, love it. But it's also a really important stone because it, it is rare to find, it is, especially good pieces. Um, you got to be clear on what you want. And if you haven't become clear on what you want and how you want to do it, take the time to do so. This is the time frame. Everybody talks about spring cleaning. I do winter cleaning. Why? Because winter cleaning means you get ready for hibernation. You get ready to get rid of the stuff you don't need anymore. So when spring comes, you can burst forth and be ta-da! Here I am like a, a butterfly out of a chrysalis. Boom, baby. So, clarity. What do you want? We're going to talk about the Queen of Pentacles. Now, one thing about the Queen of Pentacles, and by the way, this is like one of my favorite tarot decks. So, I'm not going to apologize as much as you may think I am. It ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> well, the Queen of Pentacles, it's about normally about practicality. It's about being, having security. What it is feeling right now is that you're insecure. You're feeling things that are being impractical. And, and that's what you're having your trouble with. So let's talk about it. What can you do to make sure that everything is becoming practical for you? How can you bring practicality into play? So that's when we're gonna talk about this, the world. So, the world encompasses both old and new, young and old, life and death. 
The world is everything and nothing. It is about what we fear and what we honor. So it's an important part of being who we are. It's like letting go of control issues. It allows the situation to unfold naturally. It's part of falling in love. Let go of the stuff that doesn't work. Grab hold of the things that do. And it also means that when we go into the dead of winter, into the starting towards spring, we're hitting regeneration. This card tells us things that look dead way down deep below, see? are bearing fruit as they come up. We're starting over. We're giving anew to what has gone before. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, I know that that's really great for a lot of people, but what about me? So take a look at the deck that we just poured out for ourselves. We have crystals that are big on clarity, quartz, tanzanite, Two of the biggest cards that are going to be about clarity for you. We're talking about manning cancer. Hey, we're talking about introspection. We're taking the time to look at ourselves. We're looking at our destiny. Hey, destiny time is always a dark time. It's time to see, are we being true to ourselves? Two of swords. Oof, let's, let's do this. Let's look at it. But in the end, we're looking at regenerating. We're looking at being the best that we can be. So that's what we're doing for. So for those of you who picked the Super 7, that's what you have to look forward to for winter. So now let's go to the next one. Okay, so for those of you who picked the Moonkite, we're going to do you next. All right. yours back here and get yours out here so for this winter what do you have to look forward to we have an eclipse in Capricorn and it says reevaluate success what are you considering success and what truly does it mean to you it's about new directions huh. that's a pretty good one actually <laughs> So we're also looking at the Emerald, compassion. Have you been compassionate to yourself? Have you shown compassionate lately to others? This is a big thing about when you're reevaluating stuff. Carnelian, creativity flows through me in myriads of ways. Forgiving and learning. Ooh, that's gonna be a big one for, for this theme. Mysticism, hey, that's a nice one third eye chakra. Let's take it and go forth with it. We're also looking at the Empress. Hello, lady. So, we're looking at also Diopside. Ooh, Mother of Earth. So, and Healer of Ages. And the Hierophant. And fork in the road in protection mode. So let's talk about it. Now we've talked about the first couple and what it, we're looking at. So we know that going into this time frame, we're looking at the fact that we're going to be meeting compassion. We are looking at new beginnings, new directions, reevaluating what success means. Now we know that we're looking at our creativity with the carnelian. We know that we have totally different sons of ways. But it also says here that activate the creative mind, finalize projects, realize unlimited potential, improve visualization skills, stimulate the courage to fulfill life purpose and potential. We don't always finish what we start. Different things happen, life goes on, we get bogged down by the minutia of life. So we really truly need to like figure out what we want and how we want it. So it's important for us to actually take the time to do so. Now, the Hierophant 
which came up, which I actually like that card. It's very beautiful, by the way. Is all about our group identity. It's about conformity, traditions, beliefs. What do you believe? What is helping you to do this? Have you always been, have you been stuck in the same rut? Stuck in the same beliefs that have been carrying you forward? Um, have you been using your ability and your belief system? Has it been that mysticism that has been helping you? Do you need to look on a new path? Um, a lot of times we grow weary of the path we're on and our path expands in front of us. Um, I was taught as a natural born head switch, not necessarily affiliated to any tradition per se, but I then was taken under the wing of Druidry and I learned multiple other things throughout the years and the reason why is because my path expanded it encompassed what what a friend of mine um, had said you know you you have the color of all colors with you um, the multicolored path is basically the path you take and it stuck with me for years and it is true I mean I don't walk just one path but all paths not because I'm disrespectful to anybody but because of the fact that everybody has something to give to this world to benefit this world um, and to honor those who've come before so it's something to think about now the Empress is all about beauty and nature and femininity it's all about that part of us of abundance do we give are you abundant in your giving that part of you that's more feminine the part of you that is about fertility, that is about giving, the, the growing of things. Have you been giving? Have you been growing the things in your heart? Have you been giving to Mother Earth? Are you part of saving her? Because if she's not here for you now, how are you going to be for her when she needs you later? Forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you, re you experience more love in your present moments. This is a hard hard one for most people um, forgiving and releasing most people say forgive and forget and it's not forgive and forget not truly it's forgive and releasing and learning um, because you learn from the mistakes you make you release the pain that you've held on from what they what have they have done to you so that's something that's very important to do now, fork in the rope in protection mode means that we're going to come to a place where we're going to have choices, some better than others, some that are going to look so awesome, and really, truthfully, they're not going to be in our best interest. So we want to be we want to be careful. You want to be in protective mode about yourself. You want to actually sit down, take the time and talk to people who are like healers to talk to people who are in the area and the need that you are why because they're going to benefit you in the long run they're going to be the people who give you the guidance you're going to need they not may not necessarily be in the same quote unquote same business line but they will be the ones that will give you the information you truly you will truly need to succeed so that is a big thing. So that's for those of you who picked Mukai. So we're going to go on to the last, for the next one. So for those of you who picked Iolite, we're going to do your cards next. Yay, Iolite, which means Labradorite will be the last one. So first. Oh, we have Sun and Pisces. Higher purpose. Align yourself with love and wisdom. Good thing for the winter. It's important. Opal. It's about joy. Have you experienced joy? I mean, like, really, truly, have you experienced joy in your life? Have you given yourself to joy? 
Um, it's important. The fourth chakra, Archangel Raphael. Cooperite, rites of passage. This is actually really important for this time of year, so we're going to go over what Cooperite and the rites of passage are. Um, and for those of you not familiar with Cooperite, it's very similar in nature to hematite. Um, it's a sister stone, but it's pink and, and there's a little bit more that's to it, but yeah, I long for it. I do. <laughs> uh -oh. So it's, it's going to be one of those ones that in, in your life you will probably will try to get. It's not easy to do. Five of Cups. Ooh, loss and disappointment. So you're going to have some hard times coming up. Won't last long, but it will be there. So, oh, Tiger Eye. Courage. Not bad. Nine of Cups. Excellent one, actually. Perfect. Past life relationship. You've known each other before. Turquoise. I am always at the right place at the right time with the right people. Excellent. Soulmate. And go the distance. So let's talk a little bit about this because this is going to be a little bit more in depth for the eye light. So we have the three cards of courage, rites of passage, and joy. So the big thing about the rites of passage is during the time of darkness, especially for those who are from Celtic traditions, is that this is the time of Caradon. This is the time of the crone, the dark. This is the time of cuddling in on yourself, hugging tight to your knowledge, going through what works, what doesn't work, and then figuring out, going through that rite of passage to become a better person, to become better attuned to what you do and what you are. And it takes courage to do so, because I'll be honest with you, every fall into winter when I start my rite of passage, um, things happen. Samhain every year is a kicker for me. Um, this year has been the toughest I've had probably in about 20 years. And I have to admit, I'm, I'm okay with it being tough. But this year about kicked me sideways and I didn't do well um, emotionally. But I had courage, and now I'm slowly getting some benefit from it. So hang tough. It's going to get better, I promise. We're also seeing about the fact that your soulmate, the person whom is most there for you, is coming into your life. How do we know? Because it's what's coming up. It's about happiness. It's about wishes fulfilled. That's your Nine of Cups. Oh my gosh. But you are going to have problems. You are going to have some despair. You are going to have a hard time struggling. You are going to have that little buff with your rite of passage that's going to say, make you say, I can't go a step further. But persevere. Why? Because you will have the right people at the right place at the right time. It says, improve, improve timing. Increase the occurrence of synchronistic opportunities. Be inspired with creative ideas develop understanding of various cultures and spiritual philosophies so basically it's time to expand yourself it's time to to get out there and go forward you can do this you've got the technology it's also about your fourth chakra so we're talking that we're taking the heart we're taking the deepness of, of, of the dark side of ourselves and re-looking at our heart, trying to get rid of hate, trying to get a, rid of the, the hurt. Um, we're trying to go the distance because, let's be honest, life is not 
Life is not a moment, it's a movement. All right, Lynn manuel this is your fault that I'm starting to, to talk Hamilton. <laughs> but that's what it is. But we also know that somebody from our past is going to come back and they may be part of our romantic future. So for you overall for the winter, you're going to go through a tough time. It's gonna be a, a rite of passage. It's gonna be a way to become better. You're going to have a chance to have more love and wisdom. You're gonna find your higher purpose, but you're gonna to have to struggle to get to that point, but you will get there, I promise. So now we're gonna to go to the last one, which is Labradorite, and get that taken care of. See what's involved with them. Okay, Labradorite fans. Woo! Let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> so, what I'm looking at here for Labradorite fans is Eclipse in Scorpio, regeneration. Stand firm in the eye of the storm. Sweet. Actually, that's awesome. Um, the Divine Temple. It's the source. This is a master teacher card. This is actually an awesome thing to receive. Uh, Dioptes. Heart healing. This goes hand in hand together though. That's a stunning piece um, to have for yourself. Ace of Swords. So with the Ace of Swords, you're looking at a raw power victory. Hmm, breakthroughs. Not bad. Three of Pentacles. Look at that person. Look at that. Teamwork. Collaboration. Learning. Whoa. Looks like you're on a rite of passage. <laughs> How do I know? Because <laughs> they're looking at somebody's going to try some trickery on you. Why? Because they can. Because we all have people in our life. As we start learning the divine truths, we start learning these things, they do this. Chrysocola, my mind and body are in balance. I am healthy. I have one of those stones, and I mean, I have one of those stones. It is um, tremendous power working with it. I love it. Um, woman holding a coin, and I love it because it's a itching coin. TikTok and getting to know each other. So let's talk a little bit more about what this is portraying for you. I know I've I, I've gone into some of the cards as we've gone along, and and part of it's because I start seeing things. Um, I don't go in much about some of the gifts I have, um, especially even with general readings, but. There are things that pop in and pop out and then pop back in. <laughs> so when they pop in a second time, I know, yeah, I gotta mention it. So <laughs> we're gonna talk about a couple of different things here real quick. So these two in particular. So the woman holding a coin and the getting to know each other, as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, you bond, your bond deepens. You are going to meet somebody, actually a couple of somebodies over the winter. These somebodies are going to affect both your financial house as well as your house for romance and friendship. These people will become important to you over the next two to three years. Um, and the reason is because they're going to be inspirational for you. Some are going to be friendship. Some are going to be where you're like, oh my God, wow. Um, but yeah, you're going to find that. Um, one of the things with Chris Cole, it says reduce inflammation, release your anger and resentment, heal old mental and emotional wounds, improve inner peace, balance the mind, body, and emotions. This is going to be your call for the winter, is to regenerate. Heal the old, let go of the old, because you have new things coming up that you need to be prepared for and you don't have time to waste. Um, trickery. People are going to try to trick you. 
you will have at least one close call with somebody who will actually be really awesome for you at first. But then as you start soaring, they're going to get jealous and try to trick you. Um, be on the lookout for them. They don't mean you harm per se, but their jealousy, their jealousy will can hurt you more. And it's a sad thing. It really is. Um, tick tock time. Time is not always your bestest of friends. Ooh, bestest. I'm so awesome at my words. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, that's one thing you really truly need to, to work with. The other thing is, is that you are going to have teamwork. You are going to collaborate with somebody, probably in one, with one of the people you meet, either financially or as a friend. It may be something totally awesome, just like a goof off thing you do for friends and family. But this collaboration is going to give you the regenerative idea of something better it's going to give you that opportunity to step forward to do more that you didn't think you could possibly do and that is going to give you mental clarity and breakthrough like you've never seen before um, and that is going to be so so important for you heart healing that's a big thing for you for this year um, for this winter time it is part of what the Chris Cola says, to let go of the past. It's also part of the divine temple, the source. When you approach the source, when you approach your belief system, whether it be gods and goddesses, lord and lady, um, a particular god, divine higher, divine higher, higher power, one thing about the divine temple is going to be your source power you're going to find that you're going to rely on it a lot more often and you're going to find that what you consider your source your personal source not necessarily your divine power but your divine temple your personal source of your core is going to elevate it's going to change over the winter what you may think is oh I have no skill or I'm weak in this or I don't know how I can handle this you're going to find a piece of you that is growing and changing and you're going to shine brighter and bolder like never before. It's part of your regeneration. It's part of what's coming for you. And it's going to be a boldness, a braveness that you've never had before. Um, and, in, and in a way, you're going to become a master teacher to others who are going to see that strength within you um, and ask, hey, how, how did you do that? How did you overcome that? And you're gonna feel like weirded out. Like, it's not that big of a deal, I didn't really do anything. You did something, you did. Give yourself credit, where credit is due. Be bold, be brave. Um, I was bold and brave doing this. Uh, didn't think anything of it, really. But then I got challenged to do it, and I did it. And I'm doing it still, so there you go. <laughs> And I found that I actually like doing this. This is something that I find very <sighs> peaceful. I find it relaxing. It's part of my source. Um, so yeah, helping others. I love it. I love doing readings for people. I love looking at decks and sourcing them and everything. So definitely find your source. Find your heart healer. Find anything. So definitely. So that's what Labradorite is. So there you go, guys. From Super 7 to Moonkite to Iolite to Labradorite. There's your pick a card reading for what's in store for you for winter. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys soon. Bendithia.